This is part 107 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement search functionality on every jQuery data table column. Let me explain what I mean. Notice in the example right here, we've got a search text box across every column. And notice what the search text box says. So for first name, it says search first name. And for last name, it says search last name, so on and so forth. Now, if we enter Rob, for example, in the search first name text box, then it should search only within the first name column and the matching rows should be displayed. So let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. So if we view this page in the browser at the moment, this is how the table is rendered. We only have the search functionality here, but we don't have a search text box across every column. So let's see how to achieve this. We will be modifying the same example, so I would strongly encourage you to watch part 106 before proceeding with this video. The first thing that I'm going to do here is create a variable and store the reference of the data table in it. And I'm going to call this variable data table instance. So we are storing the data table in this variable. We will be reusing this variable in a bit. And notice here, we have this success callback function opening brace and the closing brace is right here. So just before the closing brace, I'm going to use a selector and find all the th elements that we have in the tfoot section of this table. So this table has got an ID, it is data table. So let's use the jQuery ID selector to find the table using its ID. Within that, we have got T food section, and within the T food section, we have got TH elements. So we want all those TH elements. And I'm going to use the jQuery each function and loop through each of those TH elements. Now, the first thing that I want is the title, the header, you know, text. So if you look at the TH elements, we have the same set of th elements in the t head section as well as in the t foot section. They're present in the same order as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is retrieve the header text from the th elements that are present in the t head section of this table. Okay, and the reason why we need that text is because if you look at the text boxes here, notice what they say. The first name search text box says search first name. Similarly, last name search text box says search last name. So somehow we have to get that header text. So to get that, we are going to loop through each of the th elements and let's create a variable here, title equals, and I'm going to use the same selector, but I'm going to modify that. So instead of using t foot here, I'm going to use t head. And let's use the jQuery eq function. And to this eq function, we can pass the index of the th element within the array that this selector returns. And since the th elements that are present in the t head section and t foot section, since they are in the same order, the index of, you know, this th element matches the index of this th element. In both the cases, it is zero. For first name, it is one. For last name, it is two, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do here is use dollar this keyword. So this keyword references the th element that we are currently iterating over. And on that, I'm going to use the jQuery index function to retrieve its index. And we are passing the index to the eq function. And that is going to return us the th element you know, that's present in the t head section. And notice the th element has got you know the text ID, first name, last name, etc. depending on the element that we are currently iterating over. So I'm going to use the text function here, and that's going to return us the text of the th element, okay? And the next thing that we want to do is create a new text box, and we want that text there within that text box. To do that, I'm going to use this keyword here, dollar this. So here, this keyword again references the th element within the footer section that we are currently iterating over. And on that, I'm going to use the HTML function. And we want to you know, add a new input element of type equals text. And I'm going to use the placeholder 
attribute here placeholder equals search so it should say search first name search last name etc search and to that I'm going to append whatever value we have got in the title attribute and then we need to close the double quote and the input element itself right so with this change let's reload our page and see what we get now look at this I have to scroll all the way down to see those search text boxes look at that the search text box across ID says search ID search first name etc okay now I don't want to scroll to see them so I'm going to remove the scroll Y property that we included in the previous video session so let's get rid of this property and let's go ahead and reload this page so now look at this I don't have to scroll down to see the search text boxes okay all right now the border is not properly set that's because we have set a fixed width uh, I mean a fixed width to the development surrounding that data table so I'm, I'm going to actually change that to a different width so let's change it to maybe 700 pixels 1700 pixels and now it should properly surround the data table all right so now we have the search text boxes okay and at the moment you know this website column is not searchable that's because in the previous video session we have set searchable option to false let's include that in search by changing that value to true okay all right so now what we want to do whenever you know we type for example um, Rob here then we want to search for Rob in the first name column and display only the matching rows so we want to handle two events here the key up event as soon as you know I key up on letter R we want that search to kick in so we want to handle key up and we also want to handle change event on this text box so for that what I'm going to do is notice here we are using this variable data table instance so that's holding a reference to our data table so right here I'm going to use that and I'm going to use columns function okay now another important thing to keep in mind here is that if you look at you know the constructor function that we are using look at this when I press control space look at that there are two versions of data table right one with a small letter D and another one with capital letter D so, so what is the difference the constructor function with capital letter D that's the new version okay and the one with small letter D is the old version so if you are using the old version and if you want to use the new API that comes with data tables then you will have to use API function on this variable if this is not clear at the moment don't worry that will be clear in just a bit for now let's go ahead and use this new constructor function data table with a capital letter D alright so now notice here we're using columns and I'm going to use every function to loop through every column in the data table okay and I'm going to create a variable here and I'm going to call this data table column equals this so we are looping through every data table column so this keyword here references the element that we are currently the data column that we are currently iterating over and now dollar this dot footer so I'm using a function here dollar this dot footer so it's going to find the footer and within the footer what do we have so if you look at this page right here within every footer of this data column we have a text box and this text box you know it's an input element right so within the footer I want to find input element and I want to use the jQuery on function and associate two event handlers one is key up and the other one is change so whenever those events are triggered we want to handle them so this is the function that's going to handle them so what do we want to do on key up and when the text in the text box in the search text box changes we want to search this column right so data table column dot I'm going to use search function 
and to the search function we have to tell what we are searching for and where is that value going to be present it's going to be present in the respective text box so now we can use this dot value to get the value out of the text box and then once we have searched we want to retrieve the matching rows so I'm going to use draw function for that okay so pretty straightforward code there so let's save our changes and let's go ahead and reload this and look at this when I type R look at that only you know those names that have RO matches you know displayed all the others are filtered out similarly for example if I type S here you know it should match only two rows right and here if I type letter G look at that we get only one row all right so now if you look at you know the constructor function that we are using we are using the newer version now if I use the old version look at this we are using the old version let's save these changes and let's reload our page and look at this when I type Rob for example now the filtering is not working okay and if we launch developer tools so I'm trust F12 and if we look at the console we should have an error so basically notice that it says uh, columns is not a function okay so here we're using the old constructor function and if we have to use the new API then you know we have to use here look at that it's complaining that this columns is undefined basically so to get to that I'm going to use the API function and on that we can use you know columns so now if I save this let's reload this page now we should not get that error and the search should again continue to work as it used to do alright so either use API function if you're using the old constructor if you're using the new constructor function then you don't have to use that API function to use the new features alright so at the moment if you look at you know the search text boxes they're present within the footer uh, now if you want them in the header for some reason then you could very easily change that you have to do a couple of modifications so instead of t foot here we're going to change that to t head and here we are going to change that to T foot and right here instead of footer I'm going to use header so that's all so let's save our changes reload this page and look at this now we have the search text boxes in the header but there is one problem here look at this when I click on the search ID text box look at that the data is getting sorted every time I click on any of the search text box the data is being sorted by that column and we don't want that behavior we want the data to be sorted only when I click on this little triangles right we don't want this sort when we click on these text boxes so we want to prevent that so to do that what I'm going to do is we're going to reuse this selector so I'm going to cache uh, cache that in a variable so let's call this um, search text boxes equals that expression right there and we can reuse this variable so search text boxes and here I'm going to use search text boxes on so now I'm going to wire up click function and to this function let's pass the event object and I'm going to say e dot stop propagation let's save our changes reload the page and look at this now when I click in the search text box the sorting is prevented right and when we type for example Rob look at that the search functionality still works and here are the steps that we have discussed So this code basically uh, include these two blocks of code to include the search text boxes in the header. If you want them in the footer, then these are the two code blocks that you need to include. 
Thank you for listening and have a great day.